Okay, so let's see if we can cover everything about uh, the specific type of function. So let's use the first example to, to sort of go through and see everything we need to be able to do. Rachel has saved $7,250 for college. She plans to spend $600 a month from this account. Write an equation to represent the solution, uh, situation. Now it's a little vague because I'm using it as my introduction to this function here. So I'm going to define my variable y to be to represent the amount that she has left in her savings. And I'm going to represent x, or by x I'm going to represent the number of months that she's been at college. Number of months. So the further she goes in terms of the number of months, the less money she's going to have. What is the equation that describes that? Well, let's look after one month. What is the value of y? Let's make a little table here of x and y values as the number of months change from 1, 2, to 3. What is the amount she has left in her savings account? After one month, how much money does she have? How much money does she have? How do you get that? Well, she has 7250 minus 600. So she has 6650. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 6650. When x is equal to 2, in other words, after 2 months, what is the value of y? 7250 minus 1. My original amount, how do I get 12? 2 times 600. What's my answer here? 6050. So when x is equal to 2, I get the y value is 6050. Let's do one more. So I have a fair number of points. You can, of course, keep filling out this table as much as you want. So after three months, what do I have? Sticking to this way of calculating, using my original amount minus 600 times 3. To get, I'm going to go with 54. So when x is equal to 3, I get a y value of 54.50. So in general, how do I calculate y given x number of months has passed? 72.50 minus 600x. Right? That makes sense. Is everyone happy with that general equation describing how her money, her savings decrease? Another way of saying this is y equals negative 600x plus 72. Let's the same thing. Same thing. So if I look at graphically representing how x changes with y, or how y changes with x, how, how do they change? Well, I can indicate these. So I have a number line for all my x values. I have a number line for all my y values. When x is equal to 1, I have a y value, let's say it's over here, 6650. So I can represent that by a point in this x, y plane. When x is equal to 2, I have a slightly lower value, let's say it's over here that corresponds to 6,050. And when x is equal to 3, I have, let's say, a value over there corresponding to 5450. 
So if I continue with this, I do half months and all those things calculating the y value corresponding to the x value according to that equation, I'm going to notice that they all sit on a straight line, sort of straight, as straight as I can draw. They make a straight line. Now I just have three points, but you can fill in that table with however many you want to convince yourself that it's going to make a straight line. So we call this type of equation a linear equation or function, same thing really, or linear means straight line really, or a straight line equation, straight line function, because when I plot all the x, y pairs, for every x value there's a y value, when I do a bunch of them, they all sit on a straight line. Now, depending on how well you remember high school, this might seem very familiar, but I'm assuming that uh, you don't necessarily remember it that well. So I might do things that seem very simple, but I'm covering everything that I want to be aware of. So there are a bunch of things here that I want to take note of. If the first one is if my if the number of months increase by or the number increases by one, in other words, x increases by one then her savings, what is her savings? What happens to her savings? Decreases by 600. <laughs> Decrease by 600. In other words, y decreases by 600. So, I have uh, a ratio, let's leave a little space here, I have a ratio of change in y value over change in x value. Change in my dependent variable over change in my independent variable. And in our case, for every one month increase, which is x, I have a $600 decrease in y. This we call the slope of the straight line. How does that link to what I see here graphically? If I start at this point, if I go forward by one month, how much do I go down? How does my y value change? It changes by 600. So it tells me how, if I change one variable, how does the other one change accordingly? If I do a horizontal move of one month, I do a vertical move of 600. Because for every month I go forward, I lose 600, not 6,000, 600. So that's called the slope, and that's exactly this guy in my equation. We call that M. Somewhere someone decided M, and that just took off. M is the letter for the slope. M for slope. Everyone happy with the, what the slope means? One of the key things I want to do here is to be able to interpret what does this number mean? This number in front of the X. It's the change in Y over change in X. Now, depending on my meanings of y and x, I can interpret it in this case. For every, various ways to say it, for every change of one month, for every one month she goes forward in time, she loses $600. So, first thing is I want to be able to interpret the slope correctly. Any questions on 
this slope business and what it means in the context of my original problem. Everyone's so quiet. I'll edit it. You can ask questions. Yes. Why did you switch on the two? Which two? This two. Yeah. It's really just for aesthetics. Like. Because it looks nice. Okay. Doesn't Does it matter, matter though? No. Okay. no, no. If you look at a book, they'll show it like this. There's so many different ways. It's all the same. All the same. The standard form is the X guy first and then the number. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. As long as you remember the guy in front of the X, that's the slope. So the slope is arguably the most important thing I want to be aware of, as well as the two values where this straight line intersects the x-axis and the y-axis. Let's do this one first. There's a value here where the line intersects the x-axis. This point corresponds to x equal to zero. The, where these axes intersect is where they're both equal to zero. So that one corresponds to x equal to zero. So I ask, what if x is equal to zero, what is the value of y? Well, my equation, my function gives me the way to calculate that. So I plug in x equal to zero, negative 600 times zero plus 7250, and I get 7250. So that is 7, 2, 50. What does that mean? So not only do I want to, so what we're doing here is different than pre-calculus or math 12 or whatever. We're not, we're only using the equations and rules and all those things to help us answer uh, more practical problems. I'm only using the intercept because it has a meaning in terms of my original problem. What does this y-intercept mean for me? When x is equal to zero, what does that mean in terms of the problem? Say again? She hasn't gotten this yet. Well, or she just started. This means that At the very start, she has, now I know it's obvious because it's in the question, but sometimes it's not going to be that obvious. So the y-intercept indicates what is happening at the very beginning, before x, x even increases. When x is still zero, that's how much money she has. Now it's given in the question, but sometimes they can give me other things. But the, the interpretation of the intercept is still the same. Now, similarly for the x-intercept. So let me say here, I guess, y-intercept, where the line intersects the y-axis. This is the y-axis. If I ever say something that's I use a, a term that's not familiar, just let me know. What about the x-intercept? This guy, where the line intersects the x-axis, this corresponds, this x-value corresponds to y equal to zero. y equal to zero. So, if y is equal to zero, then how do I find the corresponding x value? Well, my equation is right there. Everything's going to come from the equation. But now I plug in y equal to 0 and solve for x. So 600x is equal to 7 to 50. So x is equal to 1.
what do I get as the value of x? 12.08. More importantly, what does that mean? X, the x intercept has a little bit, oh, they're equally important, but often the y intercept will be given, but the x intercept won't be. I have to interpret what does that mean. Often the x intercept is the one that's being asked. What does that 12.08 mean? How steeply it's rising? Or fall? That's the slope. She'll have uh, no money at 12 months. She has no money after 12 months. Because the, y, the x intercept here corresponds to y equal to 0, and y represents her savings. So her savings is going down at this rate 1 to 600. Every month, 600. So this slope gives me the steepness. Until at around 12 months, she had no more money. Does that make sense? So this means that after approximately 12 months, she has no more savings. So I always have to go back to my question, back to the start, remembering what does y actually represent? What does x actually represent? And when I get these values, the y-intercept, the x-intercept, the slope, what does that mean in terms of my original question? Those are the things that we're focusing on. Any questions on this? No. Okay. So let's now just look at a couple of examples to see the different pieces of information that they could give me and how I use it to find a straight line equation like this and sketch it if they want, whatever they want. So in general, my linear equation or straight line equation or function looks like this. y equals mx plus b. Now m we saw, that's the slope change in my y value over change in my x value. And it doesn't matter which points I look at, the ratio is always the same. That's the property of the straight line. The ratio is always the same. Whether I look at these two points, I get negative 600. Whether I look at these two, it's still the same ratio. Because the change adjusts accordingly. This guy, what is that? When I look at the y-intercept and this number. It's the same. So the reason I like this form is I have the y-intercept right there. I don't need to do anything. Now if you remember what you did in pre-calculus or high school or whatever, there's a bunch of different ways to write a straight line equation. You have the slope-intercept form, which is this. You have the slope point form, you have the point point form, a whole bunch of forms. I honestly don't care. I'm on camera saying I, I just don't care. When I was in school, this is the only one they gave me. There's nothing you can't do with this. It's the only one. Why would I memorize other forms of the same equation when I don't need it? I don't. This is the only one I care about. All right, let's do example number two. There is a linear straight line relationship between the price P of a widget and the quantity Q that consumers will buy at that price. So they're not really clear on what, which one is X and which one is Y, which one is the dependent variable and which one is the independent variable. We can say, well, depending on the price, 
the quantity is going to be something. So let's say my x variable or my dependent, my independent variable would be the price p. My independent variable that I often call y would be the quantity q. Okay. Given the price, they'll buy a certain number of widgets in measurably thousands. At two dollars, consumers will buy four thousand widgets, while at eight dollars, consumers will buy a thousand. So let's just write that down. I have two points that they give me. So I'm looking at my p values and the corresponding quantity values. Given the price of two dollars, what is the value of Q? Well, Q is measured in thousands, so just four, just to make it more comparable, really. A little technicality there. At eight dollars, they buy one thousand. So I have to be aware of the information that they give and then use that. Now, what do they want? They want not much, just the slope and to interpret it. But we can do more. We'll, we'll eventually do the equation just for the sake of practice. So what is the slope? Slope, I'll call it M. I remind myself is change in my dependent variable, which is Q over change in my independent variable x, which is, in this case, p. Now, it doesn't really matter here. You just pick a first point and a second point. Let's maybe plot the point. And adjust and fill this in as we gain more information. So eventually, we're going to have a little sketch here. My horizontal axis is P, my vertical axis is Q. So when P is equal to 2, let's put 2 over there, Q is equal to 4. So let's say 4 is over there. So I have that point, and I know it's going to form a straight line. When p is equal to 8, well, let's put 8 over here, q is equal to 1. So 1 is over there. So I'm looking for the ratio change in q over change in p. So I pick a first and a second point. Change in Q, 1 minus 4. Change in P, 8 minus 2. Doesn't matter the difference, second minus first, second minus first. If you have a different one, the result's going to be the same. What do I get? Negative 4 over, no, not negative 4. Negative 3 over 6 negative one half. Everyone happy with the negative one half? Now, for me personally, I interpret this as negative one over two. Put the negative at the top. Doesn't matter where that negative goes. It's the same. It helps me with my interpretation. That means that if the price increases by two, positive change of two, the quantity Q is going to go down by 1. And I get the straight line. Well, it's sort of straight. That represents this relationship. All the points that I can get. As the price changes, the quantity is going to change according to this slope. The change of 2 in the price results in a decrease of one or one thousand widgets. I'm not happy with the interpretation. Let's write a little sentence here. 
to make it very clear. So, if the price increases by two dollars, then the quantity, what is it, supplied by uh, quantity, whatever, will decrease by 1,000 because Q decreases by 1. I have to remember what Q and P actually means. P is the price, okay, that's obvious. A Q value, a Q decrease of one refers to a thousand less widgets being bought. Is everyone happy with the interpretation? I don't want to just be able to calculate this. I want this means something. What does it mean in terms of how these two quantities change with each other? If one changes, it affects the change in the other one. Positive change in price goes with a negative change in the quantity. Any questions on this? Any questions? You feel okay? We're here, we might as well find the equation, even though they don't ask for it. It's worth doing. So my equation is Q equals MP plus B y equals mx plus b. It's a lot of letters, but they all mean something. They all mean something. I have the slope. It's negative one half. I only need to find what is the value of this b. Now I know what b represents. b represents this guy. This is b, the y-intercept, or in this case, the q-intercept. But they don't give it to they give me two other points. Now, how do I find the value of B? Well, looking at that equation, I have two value pairs, 2 and 4, 8 and 1. Both of them have to satisfy this equation. So let's say they're both PQ pairs, 2, 4, and one I have to satisfy the equation. What does it mean when I say satisfy the equation? It means when I plug them in, the left hand side equals the right hand side. So pick your favorite point, let's say the first one, plug them in. So Q is 4 equals negative 1 half times P is 2 plus B. I want to find that B. So what do I get? 4 is equal to negative 1 plus B. B is equal to 5. Does that make sense in terms of my sketch here? The 5 seems okay. 5 seems okay. So my equation is Q equals negative one half P plus five. That describes how the quantity that people want to buy, how that changes as the price changes. Any questions on where we get this? What it means? Anything? Yes. Um, not about that, but okay, I think I'm pretty sure this is a really stupid question. But um, when you have like 1 minus 4, like how do you know to do 1 minus 4, not 4 minus 1? Because that would change your, because it's like it would So be you have, right, you have one of two ways to do this. Let's do it over here. My way, well, it doesn't matter. You have to have a first and a second point. It's 1 minus the other. So my way was I take this guy and take away these guys. This pair and then that pair. 1 minus 4, 8 minus 2. If 
if you decide, no, I want this guy first, then you would say 4 minus 1. And as long as it's the corresponding pair, you'd have to say 2 minus a. Okay. Okay. And I get 3 over negative 6, and it's the same. Okay. As long as you don't swap the top one but not the bottom. They have to swap together. Okay. I don't think that's a stupid question. You have to be aware. So I just pick a first and a second, and I go second minus first. But if you pick another one first, as long as you stick with that, it doesn't, it's fine. It's the same answer. The slope is one number, regardless of which point you pick, which two points you pick, as long as these two go together, these two go together. I'll get the right answer. Any other questions?